Welcome back everyone. Welcome again to the Hall River Trail River Guide Series. Today we'll be doing the Shallowford to Glencoe stretch on the Hall River. And I'm lucky enough to have my favorite little man in the whole world help me out today. That's my son there. Also on the trip today is my friend Tony in a yellow boat and my Uncle Matt in a green boat. The gauge at Hall River is showing 2.29 feet. The entire length of the run today is going to be right at 5 miles. So here we go, we're going to start up at Shallowford and I'll cover down to the power line rapid. As you put in, be careful on the stairs because it's a little bit steep there, as you saw in the last video. Navigate the rapid on the right side of the bridge and then just pick your way down the river. There's no right or wrong way to do any of these, just finding your way down. And keep on going until you notice a big power line coming in. There you can see it. The first rapid after that is power line rapid. This is going to be your typical scenery here. You can see the banks are back to about 8 feet tall. No crazy rapids here. Pretty much a good run for anyone who's uh, wanting to take it up a stretch from just a lake. The only consideration though is the dam at Indian Valley. This dam has an easy portage. It's only a two foot dam and it's got a nice sandy bank on the right to get around it. So that won't be too bad. And for the adventurous paddler, a very unique surprise is in store. Basically, you just want to pick your way down the river, enjoy the scenery. Today it's about 80 degrees. The water is not 80 degrees, so just be aware if you're going out paddling like this and you get wet, you will be cold. This is actually Tony's first day in a kayak. He's a pretty accomplished canoeist, but he's never done the kayaking thing before, so it's nice to have him along for the ride. Anytime you're coming up to a rapid like this, you're just looking for water, and that will generally point you the way to go. This one's not well defined, so as I get there, I'm just looking for where I can get my boat through there without scraping it, because it's better that way. Sometimes you have to scrape. What I want to talk about is the tongue, and the tongue is the little funnel or V of smooth water you see Pete going through there. It's the V that shoots into the rapid the furthest, and that usually indicates where your most volume of water is traveling. That's what you want to shoot for when you're looking at a rapid. You'll have a lot of boulders and rocks in the river, making some nice rock gardens. As you can see there. Just don't get hung up. When you see a rock garden and the water's a little low like this, it's easy to get hung up in there. You want to look for the uh, a good route that'll get you through there without dragging too bad. And at 2.3, essentially, which is the level today, 2.29, it uh, it's it's pretty much you can go where you want to go. But you just need to pay a little attention in the rock gardens. You might end up bottoming out. We're just going down the river enjoying a nice Sunday afternoon. This is kind of what you can expect on this run. It's all class one. There's nothing bigger than that except again for the dam at Indian Valley and the tunnel that we go through. I don't know how you rate a tunnel or a dam, but again, they're considerations. Here, Uncle Matt and Pete are racing through the rapid. See if you can get there first. Yeah, have a little fun when you're out there on these runs and enjoy it. That's what it's all about. Again, I went through the V there, indicating the most volume of water. Always be shooting for that. Here we are, you see the power line up ahead. There's going to be some little rock gardens and a couple little ripples. You're just looking for that little snake of water. You'll see me follow it. The water will tell you where to go. You see the bubble line. That's oftentimes a good route. And when the water's low, 
and the rapids aren't very consequential, that's what you look for. And here's Petey and I, we're trying to double up through power line rapid. You see the V, I'm shooting for it. Pretty well defined there. And that's what you're looking for. I look back, Petey over my shoulder. Good work, little buddy. Now that we've gone through power line rapid, We'll just wind our way under the bridge and then start picking up some boulder gardens along the way. Just wind your way through there as we approach Indian Valley access and the dam and tunnel. If you'll see the golf course, you'll know you're getting close and you'll see it on the left. Important to note, you can get out here, making it a four mile run, parking and the access is right there after the dam. Once we navigate the dam and the tunnel, We'll just make some gentle turns, uh, some really tall bluffs on the right, and then we'll be at Great Bend Access, and more about that when we get down there. So here's your typical scenery, just a nice float, some boulder gardens, well-defined banks, not a lot of places to get out unless you wanna get out on the rocks, which is typical for this river. And the wind was blowing from the rear a little bit, so the guys joked about wishing they had a sail, and lo and behold, I have a sail. And this store is under a net, an under deck net that comes on these boats. And anytime I want, I can just pop that up and get some wind power. And you need a pretty good steady wind to actually make it worth your while, but I figured I'd at least show it for the video. I've used these on some of my trips before, sailing up to seven miles per hour and just use your rudder and there you go. Holds up really quick. And they make some better sails out there, but they don't make a better sail cheaper, I don't believe. And there again, there you see it. it just folds right up, stores up underneath the deck. You'll pop it out when you want it, put it back in when you don't. They make some sails that attach permanently to your deck that if you're really into it would do better. But for the stow and go, this is about right. Now we're down to Union Ridge Road, and we're about to go under the bridge here. This is a pretty big bridge. I've never really seen wood on this bridge, but like all bridges we talk about, right where a little man's paddling there, that's where the wood's gonna be and don't get wrapped up in that. From here down the river has a lot of boulders strewn about, creating several rock gardens and little mazes, if you will, of, of water and places to go. At higher water, this whole run washes out except for the dam. But at 2.3, like today, uh, you kind of start needing to pick and choose where you're going to go to make sure you can get through it all. And again, there's no right or wrong way. They're just getting through it. It's a good place for a little kid to explore, you know, making some decisions, you know, making good runs. You see the little man knows what he's doing. He's shooting over here for the volume of water. Bypassing those little riffles. On the right there where those rocks are and heading for these, uh, the tongue again as we call it, or the V. This run has some really beautiful scenery and some less beautiful scenery on it. Some of the houses and, and whatnot you see near the bridges is not the best, but then you get stretches like this where it's really pretty. You see these big boulders in the river. Um, make great places to, to get out and take a picnic. Pete's picking his line here, let's see how he does. Not bad. I used to keep Pete in my lap in my whitewater boat and we'd do runs together. Both of us had a helmet on, life jacket, we'd do little waterfalls and all kinds of stuff. So he's really picked up a lot. And he knows pretty much what he's doing. It's been a real, real pleasurable experience being able to paddle with him. And there you see him going and making his own way, which I encourage kids to do. And, you know, he's building confidence, they're picking their route. He knows if he gets stranded over there, he's going to have to get himself off the rock by himself. And uh, 
he can do that. It's just a fun experience to watch him grow up and learn how to do this kind of thing. As you can see, if there's a little adventure to be had, he's going to go get into it. A little chip off the old block. So doing pretty good for an eight-year-old. Proud of you, buddy. Continue through the boulder garden. You see on the right side of the screen, do not go down that little channel. It's clogged with wood. Pick your way through the boulders and up ahead you see the tunnel head of my boat there, that black thing. Here we are at it, that's the dam. You want to go river left through the tunnel. Use extreme caution here. I already scouted. Do not go far left, that's the mill race leading to somewhere else. Here's my smooth move of the day. Was expecting some leftward push that never happened. So when you get through the tunnel, lean left at the bottom. See that gap? Don't get in there. Another look. Very nice, very smooth. Okay, like we learned in our last video, lean left, keep your boat off the wall. Lean left as you do that. Don't get your nose in that crack. What will happen is it'll wedge in there, tilt to the left, and fold around the rock, potentially pinning you inside your boat. I would not recommend doing this at higher water. Today is 2.3. If it got above 2.5, I would suggest doing something else on the river right, maybe going around the dam, portaging on the right. We had a little adventure day, but we did it as safely as possible. I got out, scouted, I made sure there was no wood or other blockages in that tunnel. At the top, at the bottom, all the way through the middle, never blindly go into something like that. If you have any doubt in your mind as to whether you can or should do something on a river, portage it. There's no shame in walking around something that could bring a lot of disaster. And moving down the river, these beautiful bluffs on the right will dot the landscape. On the left will be the golf course. On the other side of Tony there is a big marshy area. Today the spring peepers were out. And straight ahead there you see that sandy bank. That is Great Bend Access. And you see the steps, that's where you get out. We uh, walked up here to Glencoe as there was no parking in the Great Bend parking lot. We're parked down here at the Glencoe and I'll show you the overhead. You see the Great Bend access pin? You can walk left on the green line to get to parking or take the portage trail to the right and then it turns to green. That's the loading unloading pin as mentioned in the next video. And then you see the parking lot for this section or you can continue the yellow trail down to the put-in. And there you have it, that is Shaliford to Glencoe.